But what happens in our life when we're uh, photobombed, something, someone ruins a moment. So we want to talk this morning just for a little bit about conflict in our relationships. We've been talking about relationships for the last, because everybody is going to be in some sort, or already is, in some sort of relationship, husband, wife, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, grandparent, mom, dad. Everybody's going to be in relationships. Why can they be so, man, so beautiful and so great and so wonderful, but how is it that they can also be, uh, what we like to say here is toxic and bad? They can be so hurtful, they can ruin the moment. Photobomb. They can ruin a moment that you thought, man, this is a cool, oh. And what we like to say is sometimes we handle conflict in our relationships, we handle it the wrong way. We dominate it. This is what I like to call, if you have your outline when you walked in, I want you to take that out, maybe fill in something, take some notes. What we do with conflict, just some ways that we handle it that are not the right way, that aren't the biblical way. For those who uh, (laughs) believe but also follow Jesus, because there is a difference. For those who believe and follow, we handle conflict the wrong way, we dominate it, which I like to call the Italian way. We just dominate it. We we power up. We stick our chest out. Loudest in the room wins. That's it. Or the person that can throw something the furthest. Just a little little something this morning. Uh, I left to come here uh, at the church. And uh, I don't know if if you have a mom like this. um, But if, like, you don't call and she won't listen. My mom listens to the Saturday night podcast, so I can say at 930, uh, whatever I want about my mom. (laughs) So uh, if you don't call my mom, like, you have a whole day to call, don't you? Right? You have a whole day. Moms don't answer. Guys, we have all day to call, right? All day to go, hey, mom, happy, or to your wife. If you don't call my mom by lunch, you missed Mother's Day. I don't, I don't quite understand that. I don't, like you have a whole day. There's a whole afternoon, early evening. But if you don't call by lunch, then what my mother, my mom will do is she'll go, well, you forgot and somebody reminded you. So that's why you're calling. It's awesome. So this morning I called her at 610 in the morning. It's actually 510 where she lives. I was like, what are you doing, old lady? Get up. And this is her response. Her response is, oh, I'm up. (laughs) My mom's a trip. I was like, happy Mother's Day. What are you doing? And then she rifled into, um, she was going over my sister's house um, and how she wasn't happy about that because she technically really wasn't invited. But, um, (laughs) but, But they needed to go somewhere. And because she doesn't, my sister doesn't really cook, although a wonderful person, she's the skills on cooking. So, but my mom loves to cook. So it's just kind of this whole, and that's what we talked about for 15 minutes. And then I said, Mom, happy Mother's Day. And she goes, okay, <laughs> this is great. What are you doing today? Mom, I, uh, I'm a pastor at a church. You remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Today's Sunday, right? Yeah. Well, what'd you do last night? Mom, we, remember we have a Saturday night service. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Okay. Well, don't get mad at me. Don't get upset. I've got a lot on my mind. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We tend to dominate. We tend to just dominate the conversation. In a conflict, we'll dominate. Or this is what some people do. Uh, They'll ignore it. Oh, it doesn't happen. Uh, A lot of uh, so-called, this is what I like to say, a lot of so-called Christians take this one. Oh, I'm ignoring that slanderous thing they said. Or that terrible thing they did because I am a Christian. Because I'm a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. (laughs) You're also a doormat. You don't do that. The Word of God, and here we go, never says, never in any particular situation, never says. See, when we ignore it, listen, when we ignore when someone's photobombed us or hurt us, when we ignore it, it is actually the catalyst for bitterness in our heart. See, these are, these are the ways we shouldn't handle conflict. We don't dominate it, not the loudest in the room wins. We don't puff up, we don't stick our chest out. We don't dominate it. This is an an unhealthy way. Selfies about us and our relationships and creating healthy, godly relationships. What does a healthy relationship look like? It's what we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. You don't dominate, you don't ignore it. 
Oh, this is, this is the other one. Uh, we sometimes white flag it. Ah, it's a hopeless cause. It's a hopeless cause. It's, it's always, he's always going to be, she's always going to be mad at that. She's always going to, so, it's every time I mention, whoa, it goes nuts. It's always going to be. So what happens. We white flag it. When we white flag it and give up, this is the way it's been. This is the way it's always going to be. It winds up being a catalyst to lessen our faith in the power of Almighty God. It might have been ways for years, true. And there's remnants of that still going on in the relationship. But make no bones about it. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. You're never too far or too drawn out for God to get a hold of your life and change it in an instant. Ever. See, these are unhealthy ways. We dominate it. We white flag it. We ignore it. Those are not, they're not Christian biblical ways to deal with conflict in our relationships. But we tend to gravitate towards some of them. There's more. I just want to cover three. Because these, what I have found with people and myself, is when I participate in any of these three or throw all three at the same time, they immediately affect my personal vertical relationship with Jesus. Because ignoring it starts to harbor some bitterness. When I white flag it, I, I tend to believe that certain people, because of their demeanor or their disposition, are beyond God's grace and forgiveness. None of that is biblical. Now, we've wrestled with this scripture before that we're going to go over. And man, it's just so intense. I want to dig a little deeper on it. James, the half-brother of Jesus, speaking here, and he lays it out pretty simple. He says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? What is it? What's going on? The, 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 the photo bombing that's going on, the controversy, the conflict trial, the conflict that's going on between you and someone. And we're going to cover a biblical example this morning that we rarely, people rarely ever talk about. Selfie week three, which this is, it's the toughest week, and I want to ask you to do something. When we start looking at this, can I ask you not to push back for a few minutes? For the next 15 minutes, can I ask you not to push back and go, come on, Pastor Q. Come on. Can I ask you just to sit and maybe open up a part of your heart and a part of your mind that may be the way that our Creator tells us how to handle conflict is the best way? No pushback, just for a few minutes. Because it's tough. It's tough stuff. James says, what causes the conflict between you and someone? What causes those quarrels and fights? What is it? He says, don't they come from your desires? Don't they come from how terrible that person is, how immature they are, how awful they are to you, how disrespectful they are? Don't they come from how they don't absolutely value you? Don't they come from their selfishness? See, we miss the subtlety and the beauty sometimes in Scripture. So we're talking about conflict. We're talking about somebody has done something or said something to us that has made us mad. It has hurt us. Hurt usually manifests itself in anger, especially if you're what I like to call God's Italian favorite. No. It says, don't they come from your desires? See, selfie is about us in relationships. It's not about them. It's about us. He says, don't they come from that quarreling and fighting, that conflict that's happening? Doesn't it really come from something in you? Doesn't it really come from something in you, something that battles within you? I mean, you want something, but you don't get it. I would love to be called, happy to be told, happy Mother's Day by 12 o'clock noon. That would be awesome. I want it. But he's busy, he's big shot, he doesn't have time for me. So when you call at 3.30 or 4 o'clock... There's anger, there's strife, there's this weird tension. 
Yeah, I know. You're hurt. You're upset because he's selfish and he's not thinking of you and he's not a grateful son and he's not. That's not what the Word of God says. The Word of God says those in the quarrels and the fights and all of that happen because you desire something and you want something, but you're not getting it. It says you kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You're not getting what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have what you want. You do not know this conflict, this controversy, this tension in a relationship. It's because you don't know what it is. You don't know how to get, you don't know how to figure it out. It's because you don't go to God, James, the half-brother of Jesus says. See, and there's this concept in Christianity sometimes that we don't talk about because it's the tough stuff. It's so simple, but yet so profound. It's so simple. See, sometimes we think simple is easy. Sometimes the simplest things are the hardest things. See, see, it's so simple, and we see it here in the scripture about conflict. The conflict that's going on isn't actually about you. It isn't actually about them. It's about you. But Pastor Q, if you only knew, if I could just take 10 minutes and explain to you how wacko crazy this chick is, you would know it's really her fault. Pastor Q, just give me five minutes. You would say, wow, that guy is an idiot. He is really, really bad. Hmm. Maybe. We're not saying that that's not true. We're not saying what the person said or what the person did was not wrong. What Selfie is saying is about you, us, and relationships. And the Word of God says, well, you quarrel, you fight, you've got this controversy, you've, you've got this thing between you, you've got this conflict. Doesn't it come really from you? Doesn't it really come from something inside of your desires? Because there's this concept in Christianity that it will always be more about this than it will this. Always. Always. It'll always be. It's not to exonerate someone, something somebody said. It's not to exonerate them from their behavior. Here's a perfect example. One of the things that we do in your outline that the Word asks us to do is because it's not this, it's this. Doesn't that come from, it's, it's when we're dealing with conflict in a relationship, what God's word wants us to do as believers and followers is number one, check yourself. Check yourself. Because it's not always, and it's not just this, but it will always be this. Doesn't that come from something inside of you? Look at this concept. Look at throughout scripture. Look at Jesus. He says blind, this is Jesus speaking, blind Pharisee. The religious community that winded up having a higher value on how things looked and how things were perceived rather than their heart. That's what the Pharisees are. They're into putting on. They're into putting on. And he says, you blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will also be clean. This you're, we're focusing our energy, our time, and everything on, look at what she did. Look at what he said. I can't believe that. Look at the way they are. Look at the way they're not. Look at the way they're not. And we lose focus of what happens in conflict to believers and followers of Christ that we're supposed to first look in. We're supposed to first check ourselves. And it's a concept throughout Scripture. It's not that that person's not wrong. It's not that they're absolutely a jerk or insensitive. Remember, we don't ignore it. We don't white flag it. We don't dom. It's not that. But you're losing the purpose. Do we think that controversy and conflict in a relationship is new to Jesus? I can't imagine they're fighting today. I can't believe it. That's weird. I didn't see that coming. (laughs) And the word says, be careful, because you'll be so focused on this that you'll lose what's happening here. That's why even Jesus says, you Pharisees, what are you doing? You're so concerned with the outside. Hmm. You're so concerned on the, you're forgetting the in. You're forgetting the in. Here's something else that's great. We've heard this before, some of us. 
Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own? It's the concept through all throughout Scripture. Be careful in the, in the controversy. Be careful in the conflict. Because it must, might be all of a sudden, it might be about everybody else. It's them. They don't understand. They don't listen. They don't so-and-so. They don't. But isn't quarrels and fights and, contract, and controversy and conflict, isn't it really about your desires? You want something, you can't get it. You see, following Jesus is not to exonerate those people, but following Jesus takes a bigger step, and he turns around and says, yeah, but what's going on? I want us to get this. We might camp here for a little while until at least 1130. We'll tell the other service to go to the Baptist church. Listen, here's the thing. I want us to get this. It's not even on your screen. It's not, listen, it's not in your outline. There's a proverb that says, guard your heart, for out of it is the wellspring of life. See, what the scriptures are getting at is not exonerating behavior, is not exonerating what people say that have hurt you, that are creating controversy and conflict. No. But what it's saying is, take a good look inside, because that anger that's welling up, that hatred, that bitterness, that impulse to just launch back in, I'm going to give them a piece of my... Something got past the guard of your heart. And what they did to you on the outside has made something come out that got in. See, that's what we don't talk about a lot in Christianity. It's not about being a doormat. It's not about uh, white flagging it or ignoring it like it didn't happen, but it's dealing with it. Listen, what I have found, because uh, you can ask my, my kids were too small. Maybe they're scarred and I don't even know it. Who knows? But when I became less concerned about being right, and more concerned about being spiritual, that's when my temper got under control. When I became more concerned about being spiritual than I was being right. See, and what happens is the Word of God makes us look at things and says, yes, I know all of that's happening. But what's happening is it's creating in you some sort of behavior. It's creating in you some sort of reaction. Whether we curse them out, whether we post something on Facebook, whatever we do, it's creating something in you because something got past the guard of your heart. And what they're doing to you on the outside is making something well up that got inside. That's why we go back to week one. You're a terrible pastor, you don't know how to preach. I don't, I can't stand the chapel. What I like about the chapel, but it has five things I don't like. Here's a, that's just some typical emails that come in, just so we're clear. Let me tell you what I don't like. I don't know why we have to, I don't know. Look, that's why we go back to week one. Who are you in God? Because if you don't have a well-rounded definition of who you are vertically and what God has called you to be, what he has called you to do, and what he wants you to do, if you don't have that and you're not working on that vertical relationship, your horizontal relationships will take you away from who God created you to be and what he's called you to do. And sometimes in our conflicts, we want to lash back out. See, I knew we were going to camp. Look, look, ready? It's not in your outline. I, I, it's a terrible outline this week. I am sorry. <laughs> Do you remember the story of Peter in the garden? Peter, one of the disciples. We think he's Italian because he was always getting in trouble. We think he was Italian because he pulled out the sword and he cut the ear off of the soldier who was coming to arrest Jesus. Do you remember that story? We heard this before. Turn the other cheek. We think turn the other cheek means a doormat. We think turn the other cheek means you don't get into controversy. We think turn the other cheek because we're trying to be politically correct. We don't open our mouth. What turn the other cheek means, and Peter cutting off the ear of the centurion soldier coming to arrest Jesus, the concept there is not to be any of those things. The concept there is not to become the evil that has been done to you. Because when we retaliate, When we retaliate at the level, we become the very evil that has been done to us. See, that's the concept. That's the concept of biblical conflict. It's not to become the things that have been done to you. 
Yeah, you can say all those things about me. That's fine. They're actually not true, and they don't affect me because I know who I am. I know who I am in God. You see, here, why do you look at the speck? Because something got on the inside. The first thing Scripture wants us to do in a conflict, here it is. How do we do that? Is We look at ourselves. You first take a look at yourself. How do we do that? Here it is. You do not have because you do not ask God. How do we do that? We pause. Everybody's like, man, Pastor Q, you are crazy. You know why pausing is so hard when someone says something and we just want to, mm. you know when somebody does something to us and we want to, all of a sudden, this is because this is what I used to do, I don't do it anymore, thank God, because this would be a horrible church, trust me. <laughs> Some of you are like, it is. No, but watch. The, what I used to, is I would gather people on my side. When someone hurt me or offended me or did something I didn't like and there's this controversy and conflict, I'd call some bros, I'd call some homies, I'd go, listen, man, let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what, can you believe so-and-so did this and da-da-da? And they would go, believe it or not, they would go, I can't believe that. That's it. I'm not calling them, I'm not hanging with them, I'm not being with them. No, 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 you do whatever you want. I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you not to be friends with them. I'm not telling you not to call them. I just wanted to tell you what was going on because it, it, it hurt me. Because it hurt me. See, we've lost the art of pause for one simple reason. One simple reason. We don't live in a society that waits anymore. That's it. How do we check ourselves biblically when we're in conflict? The first step is to check ourselves. What's going on? Why is this making me so mad? Why am I so ticked off? What is that? That's what the Bible says about conflict. Before you go and confront, you check. Before you confront, you check yourself. Hmm, what's going on on the inside of me? And how do we do that? We pause first. And it's so hard to pause because here's the deal. If I want to find out the weather in Colorado, I get it in three seconds. If I want to find out how mad my mother was at my sister's for dinner, I just text my sister. I'll find out in 33 seconds. Or my mother's already texted me and told me. It's because we don't live in a society that pauses and waits for anything. We live in an instant society. Instant gratification, instant answers, instant research. We've lost the art of pausing. We're going to talk about this next week on how detrimental it is to our relationships. That's a side note. But listen. We've lost the art of pausing, but meanwhile, it says you don't have because you don't go to God. And what we're saying is pause. Go to God before people. Before you send that email, before you gather the troops against that person or someone or something, before you do that, pause. Pause. Oh, now it gets tough. Now everybody's starting to sweat. Well, Pastor, I'll have to look that up. I'll have to Google that. I don't know. <laughs> pause. Pause for a moment, and what is that going on here? What, what's, why am I so mad that they said this about me? What does it matter what they say about you? I'm not saying to not to confront them. What I'm saying is, why would you let anything else shape and have the power to shape and mold you and guide you other than your creator? It's never supposed to be that way. The biggest influence in your life should be your savior. I'm not saying other people don't influence us. What I'm saying is your biggest influence. I'm not saying we don't love other people, but your greatest love should be that of the Father. See, we tend to see things in extremes. Well, I can only love Jesus. Well, that's not biblical. Because how you love people is a reflection on how you love Jesus. <laughs> your horizontal relationships, all they are is a byproduct of how intact or not intact your vertical relationship is with God. So check yourself, pause, I go to God before people. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. Yeah! James. <laughs> That's so silly. James, half-brother of Jesus. He says, take note of this. He says, everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak, and slow to become angry. We might have heard this scripture before, but let me show you the brilliance of God's word. 
when you are quick to listen, but the minute you hear a word, I want to listen to me, man. My mind can work so fast. I can jump on someone after three sentences. They don't even know what hit them. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. You know what I found in the brilliance of God's word? When I'm quick to listen and I'm slow to speak, I have become less angry. But because we're instantaneous, and we pounce, and we run the risk of becoming the exact evil that's been done to us. Slow, quick to listen, slow to speak. When I can do those and I can practice those, that's the pause. I find myself becoming less angry. What happens in my conflicts, because I have a good four or five of them every week, by the way, is I find that when I go to God first, I pause, and I go to God first, and I allow him to examine why that, when that person did that, why it hurt me so bad. When that person said that, why did it wound me so deeply? When I find myself doing that, and it doesn't happen the first time. Can I just tell you the first time I did this, I heard nothing. So I called that person up and cursed him out. I know that's not very spiritual, but that was years ago. It's before I became a pastor. It was four years ago. So watch, here's the deal. I'm kidding. Listen, it's a, it's a routine. It's a habit. It's a discipline. How you get better at things, you discipline yourself by doing it over and over and over. And then it becomes second nature. <laughs> Side note. That's why... It's so interesting with Jesus when it says when Jesus was born, the word became flesh. Because he knew the word so well and he disciplined himself so much in the word that it took on flesh and blood because Jesus moved into the neighborhood and you saw what the word of God was when he was living. (laughs) See, and it becomes a discipline and we do it over and over. What I have found when I do that and I pause in my conflicts and I practice this and I become less angry I realize at a new level the amount of forgiveness, mercy, and grace that I need. And it's a whole lot easier to give it away when you know how much you need yourself. But when we react and we're more concerned about being right than spiritual, I lose our second point. Let God work on me. How we deal with conflict is let God, we check ourselves. How do we check ourselves? We go to God before people. What we do, number two, very simple, very simple. Let God work on me because selfies about you, us, and relationships. It's not about how evil, how bad they are. It's not about how denigrating they've been. It's not about that. It will be, but first I'm going to use every, I said this before and I actually got a lot of emails on it that were negative. I want to say it again to see how many more I can get. I've said this, God is a stingy God. Oh, how can you say that? He's the giver of life. He's the giver of all things. He's the giver of so-and-so. Yeah, yeah, I know. I get, watch me. He's a stingy God because he will never let an experience, a moment, a minute, or an hour go unused if we choose to use it to grow us spiritually. You see, that's what's happening in our conflicts. We're reacting and combative, but we don't check ourselves. We don't go to God before people. We don't allow him to work on me. So I miss the opportunity of this conflict growing me into who he created me to be. I focus on some idiot who made fun of me. I focus on some fool who said something about my family or did something that was detrimental. And I spend more time on that trying to rectify, trying to fix everything than I do allowing this conflict to shape and mold who God created me to be. See, let God work on me. And here's the scripture. It says this, these trials, these conflicts that happen will show that your faith is genuine. Because Jesus knows everything. There's no surprise. This conflict that's happening in your relationships, it's going to show, it's going to prove something. It's going to bring something to the surface. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Look at these words. Though, whose faith? Your faith is far, from, far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, conflicts, controversy, it will bring who? You much praise and glory and on the honor on the day when Jesus is revealed to the whole world. Selfie is about you. It's about us and relationships. See, what we misunderstand is the conflict. See, when I first check myself, whoo. 
What got on in the inside that caused that level of reaction? Whatever it is. And let me just say, some level of reaction doesn't have to be throwing something across the room, slamming a door, punching a wall, screaming, yelling, cursing. Some reactions just clam up and go to the other room, and you can't pry them open like a clam, and they won't talk. Hmm. Just depends on your personality and your wiring. See, when we, we have that conflict or controversy, when I go and I first check myself, and I go to God before I go to people, and then I allow God to work on me, then you stand or you talk to that person and go, listen, John, let me just tell you something the other day. What you said was wrong, and it was mean, and it was hateful. And I'm telling you, quit saying it. I'm telling you. What, listen, you know what, Steve? Let me just tell you something. The other day when we were hanging out and you said so-and-so, this is what I heard. I'm asking you if it's true. And if it is, that's fine, but that's not right. Don't you talk about my family. Don't you talk about my wife. Don't you talk about my kids. Don't you so, don't. Then you can stand because no one else then can possess the power to change you other than the Holy Spirit of Christ. Because then you stand. I'm not saying you don't confront. You cannot change what you're not willing to face. Some of us just need to turn around to some relationships and go, listen, especially in our friendship relationships. Listen, you keep this up. You keep saying, and I keep hearing. You keep doing, and I keep seeing. You keep doing it, you're going to lose this. You're going to lose this. You're going to lose this as a friend. And I want to speak to the marriages in the room. If you're the man in the relationship, I want to speak to the men. When Jesus, when, and the Word of God says in Paul in Ephesians, he says, Husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church. He died for the church. He's coming back from the church. So there should be a piece of you that's dying every day. Ladies, he doesn't say love your husbands. He says respect them. Some of the controversy and conflicts in our marriage is because neither one of you had the same definition of, neither one of you had the same definition of respect. Sit down and understand what it means, what John wants as respect, what John sees as respect. And that's not your definition, it's his. Cricket, cricket, I knew week three was going to get quiet. <laughs> One of the reasons why in Scripture separation of relationships is frowned upon in Scripture and is a big deal. You can see it in relationships that King David had with Saul's son, Jonathan. You can see it in the relationship that Jesus had with John the Baptist when he dies. It's one of the places that scripture says that Jesus cried and wept. It's because relationships are a gift from God. And when we can handle them properly and handle the conflicts that are inevitable in every relationship, healthy or not, when we can handle them biblically by checking ourselves, going to God before people, and letting God work on me, then we're on the road to biblical, healthy relationships, especially when it comes to photobombing. Especially when it comes to photobombing. I don't even think it's, I, I, it's in this. I said this week one, but I'm telling you, we're going to make magnets and stick it everywhere we can. Listen, ready? Don't expect from man what should only come from God. Don't expect from man. There, no relationship is meant to fulfill you other than a relationship that you should have with your creator. No job, no title, no position should fulfill you and bring you to a level of acceptance or value other than your relationship with your creator. No husband, no wife, no aunt, no uncle, grandparent, no sibling should fulfill you to the point because it will let you down. We have to stop expecting from man that should only come from God. We're just getting revved up. This week, this series is going to last 37 weeks, I'm telling you. And you bow your head so I can pray for you. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you, Lord, that your word always guides and always teaches and always directs us. Lord, this week, Lord, in all of our relationships that we have, let us know that our value first comes from you. That in our conflicts, Lord, that will happen, Make us this week, teach us this week, train us this week, Lord, to check ourselves and what's happening internally. Teach us how to go to you 
pause and go to you and ask, why do I feel this way? Why am I thinking this? And then allow, Lord, asking that you give us the strength to allow you to work on us, on our hearts, on our minds. Lord, watch over us this week. Give us the wisdom to pull those, the right people close, to love the people that are not good for us, but not be too close. Watch over us, Lord. Teach us how to see people the way you see us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Teach us how to love people the way you, our Heavenly Father, loves us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. Let's stand together.